Today we are installing an air source heat pump in this little bungalow behind me. It's been running on oil for the last 25 years because this area has no mains gas. And in this video you're gonna see what's involved in converting an oil system into an air source system. What we have outside is a big tank for oil because there is also an external oil boiler. They've run the pipework underground in plastic push feet because you see this is a combi boiler. So you've got four pipes going in and out, hot and cold, flow and uh, return. We are in the kitchen and the oil boiler is just behind the window. And the way they've run the pipework, there's plastic pipework going below the kitchen units. Then it goes to copper right here splits to heating on the ground floor and then goes through the loft to the old airing cupboard in the middle of the property so kitchen is just right here and the bathroom on the other side of this wall and the hallway behind me so there are no external walls in this airing cupboard and they've swapped the cylinder for an, a radiator so they could dry their towels you know that's what people used to do when vented cylinders were taken out so we're putting an unvented cylinder here and the problem we have, or difficulty, a difficulty is getting temperature and pressure relief to the outside. The way I'm gonna try to do it is by going through this wall and that wall goes to the kitchen and it will come under those kitchen units to the outside. So that's gonna be probably relatively tricky. Shouldn't be impossible though. Cupboard finished, plant room. I don't think it takes too much space. Probably the same what it used to be with the old cylinder before they went oil outside in the oil combi boiler. There used to be a cylinder here, vented cylinder. We have changed it now to unvented and we went with temperature pressure relief. It's a safety pipe. It always needs to go to out to the outside. So sometimes it's a consideration when cylinders are installed in the middle of the property. Luckily, we managed to get the pipe under the kitchen cabinets to the outside. Let me talk you through the pipe work while it's still not locked, uh, so you can understand how the system is piped. Coming from here, this is our mains going to the cylinder here on the bottom, mains water. Then here, second pipe is hot water going back to the house. Obviously going through, main supply goes through the expansion vessel after the combination valve. So this is a pressure reducing valve and also has an expansion valve if there's too much pressure. That will go here and to the tan dish and to the outside. This pipe here, the first 28 mil pipes, so we've got 222 so mains water, hot water. This one here is the main flow coming from the heat pump outside through the loft and that flow goes to a diverter valve, on one side goes to the cylinder, on the other side goes to our heating system, to the radiators. Now the second pipe, this one here that connects to the expansion vessel, that's a primary return. This is return going back to the heat pump. Now expansion vessel should also always be on the return pipe work or on the suction side of the circulating pump. Fill and flush valve, we're gonna use it in a second to clean the system, we haven't done it yet. Then we've got our heat meter and then we've got this last T here. That's a T from the heating system and that's a Y strainer from the heating system. So we can isolate it with those valves here and clean it on the services. There's a little mesh inside and obviously the other return is coming back straight from, from the cylinder. And that would be all for the pipe work. On the control sides, heat pump interface unit. Uh, this is really not for the end user. Receiver for the controls, internet gateway, power supply for the internet gateway and power supply for the monitoring. So if you install monitoring or internet gateway, you need to put two additional sockets. Spare switch for the, uh, here for the controls, right, right here for the heat pump interface unit and a backup immersion heater right here. This is obviously a bungalow and bungalows are pretty nice for running pipe work in the lofts because usually lofts cover the whole floor space and you've got access to every single room and the worst you might have to do is to chase pipe work or drop the pipe work on the wall for radiators. 
And here in the loft, we've run both our primary pipe work flow and return going from the heat pump, from here, uh, over there. And we've also run then pipe work for central heating back to the radiators. And we've done it all in a 32 millimeters MLCP. And then we've run 28 mil copper in the plant room as well. Just how gigantic is this tank and this boiler? This boiler is probably even bigger than the heat pump we installed here. And much more polluting, much more noisy. And I mean, this bit of kit, my God, your own petrol station in the garden. Who would want that? So this unit behind me is now running at almost maximum power during hot water for the first time. And you almost have to look at it to know it's on. It's so quiet. I know people say with time they'll get noisier. Install them well, install them level, and they'll be whisper quiet for years. Now, we can also talk about running costs, because right now oil is about 63, 65 pence per liter. Electricity, I think, new cap is 22 pence. So oil is ki kind of competitive. It's not crazy expensive. However, we've designed this system to run at maximum of 40 degrees Celsius flow. So this system will only run at 40 C when it's uh, minus two outside. That should result in a scope or seasonal coefficient of performance of over four. 4.2, I think. And that means this setup will be about roughly 10% cheaper to run than oil. So we know it's quieter, we know it's cheaper to run. And also look at how problematic this oil setup must have been. Imagine taking deliveries of oil, this pollution in this beautiful area, having to smell the fumes from an oil boiler. It's uncomparable how much better well-designed and installed system, air source heat pump system is to any oil boiler. In two bedrooms, we've got one double panel radiator each, 1200 by 500. In the living room, we've got two uh, double panel K2 radiators of the same size. All of those radiators will run at maximum flow of 40 degrees. So they only get to 40 degrees when it's around minus two, minus three outside. So all this system will run at efficiencies of well over 400% uh, or for those of you who don't like, uh, percentage efficiencies, coefficient of performance of four and over. If you look into the Veyland book, it should run at those temperatures at 4.2. But from experience, I know that those systems usually run higher, the ones that we install, so around 4.5, 4.6 on heating and probably around three or thereabouts uh, on hot water. So this system is already running and I've just connected this internet box to it and that should bring my open energy monitoring online so we can see how it performs. See that code here? If you scan that code, it takes you straight to the monitoring of the system. There we go. The system's running and you can have a look at it. So, right now, it's running at the cup of 6.25. Go and have a look for yourself so you can see what it's doing, uh, what the system is doing right now, because anyone can access live monitoring of, of those setups. Are those systems, those open energy monitors worth installing? Because uh, they, they are expensive. The kit is about 600 pounds, including VAT, maybe 700 pounds, which is a lot. But in my opinion, those systems are worth every penny. The insights you can get into them no heat pump onboard monitoring will ever allow you to do. What this system allows you to do is to fine tune your setup because what you can do, you can make changes to your settings on your uh, heat pump programmer and see instantly how it affects performance. And that way you can dial in the most optimal settings. And I would argue that over the lifespan of the system of 15 to 20 years, this system Installing open energy monitor will pay for itself many times over just in energy savings and also extending the lifespan of the system because you can instantly see if the system is cycling and address the issues so we don't have too many compressor starts. I absolutely love those setups. If you have open energy monitor installed on your heat pump, please 
let us know if you think it was worth spending the money to have it installed. Leave a comment so we can start a discussion about open energy monitoring kits and how it helped you with your own setup. And you have to agree, this garden side of the house looks so much better without that gigantic tank and an oil boiler. Smells gone, all noise is gone, more efficient, cheaper to run setup has been installed. And I know the landlord, because this is a rental property, is also putting battery storage and solar. His tenants, they will absolutely love him for that because this house will have zero bills on heating and hot water. I think that's the way forward, don't you agree?